Back in 1906, Boonville was the heart of activity in Anderson Valley. Nestled in Northern California with mountains on three sides, the ocean beyond the redwoods, and rich farmland just as far as you could see it. Hard-working people live here from all walks of life. Every one of them has a story, and I know most of them, because I've been the town's doctor for as long as I can remember. <laughs> but there was one story about a quiet girl named Melinda that transformed this town forever. Maybe that's because she didn't get the best start in life. You see, she was born out of wedlock. I'm sorry. I'm looking for Pastor Palmer. Oh, the pastor's inside. Melinda. And she grew up knowing that judging eyes were always on her. She often visited Pastor Virgil Palmer, who didn't judge her, but listened patiently to all of her questions. She reached the age where she wanted to know what happened to her real father, but no one would tell her. It's time you had your own Bible. No, I, I can't answer all your questions, Melinda. But God's word will. Pastor Palmer? Hmm? Is hating bad people a sin? It can be. Why do you ask? I'm always wishing my life was like other families. But there's just no pleasing my stepdaddy. You know I knew him. Your real father. I... I've been wanting to talk to you. Tell you. you just... Just wait here. I'll, I'll be right back. What are you doing here? Oh, hurry. You hear that? Hurry. Oh. Hurry. hurry. Someone help me! Hurry, hurry. Someone help me! Yes, Pastor Palmer! Right. Man, I'm so much off Pastor Palmer. Trouble just seems to follow you, doesn't it? Now get on home. Go on, get! Melinda's stepfather, Maddox, was a heartless man. Money was his god and it always got him what he wanted. Clyde was the town's watcher. He had a terrible fear of the dark, so he comforted himself with a lit lantern, night and day. Melinda's home looked as friendly as a warm apple pie on a windowsill. Melinda? But looks can be deceiving. Where are you, Melinda? It's bad luck to worry your mama. Melinda! Child. No! That's for worrying your mama. We live too near an insane asylum. One of those crazies could have broke out and hurt you. You sit right down there. And churn up that letter. Mm. Cover your mouth when you yawn. Your soul can go out of your body. Her mama's superstitions were an amusement and a, and a puzzle to her. Actually, to all of us who knew Alice. Hmm. Looks like it's gonna rain. I better put an acorn on the ledge to keep the lightning away. Another superstition, Mama? It's science. What am I supposed to do with this? It'll bring you good luck. Did my real daddy believe in acorns? What? Here, I, why don't you have some more milk? All you do is stuff it with food like I was a pantry. I'm old enough to know what happened to my father. What is this? Pastor Palmer gave me that. Is this where you're getting all your crazy ideas? 
I don't want you reading it. It's full of lies. Then why do we go to church? Because it's a good work and I'm trying to be a good person and I have a lot of... I don't need to explain myself to you. Melinda's questions about her father always went unanswered. It was what people didn't say that sparked her search for the truth. I'm gonna be a while. Why don't you go see if any of your friends are in town? Sorry about Pastor Palm. What? He was a good man. I know he was important to you. I'd see you go visit him. Clyde, you're always watching things here in town. You ever hear what happened to my daddy? Huh? Well, why? Why, did you hear something? Clyde, you know something. I can tell you're lying. You see everything that goes on. Stop! Look! Look what you've done! My best lantern! My very best! No, no, go away! How will I get home now? You're just trouble. I'm sorry, it was an accident. What if I get you a new one? A better one? Will you tell me about my daddy? How new? The best. Just tell me what you know. I want to see the lantern first. Wait here. Sure is a pretty one. Clyde, my daddy. Oh, yeah. Well, I know he used to work for your grandpa and grandma, and he was sweet on your mama. He was a good boy. But then, one day, he just up and disappeared. We think coyotes got him. Yep, coyotes got him. She knew that the truth was somewhere in the lies. Did you know our town was named after W. Boone? He's some relative of Daniel Boone. They dropped the E. I don't hear you talking to me. Of course you hear me, you answered. Just mind your beeswax. I don't care this stupid town's named after. Stupid boy. I ain't stupid, Melinda. I knew this and I told you first. Why you gotta be so mean to me? Cause I can be. You're too stupid to stop me. Ow! You're meaner than a bear on her tick that. You're my sister, ain't you supposed to be nice to me? There ain't no brother-sister law. Give me some of that. Look, I'm just me. I got something inside me that's mad all the time. Nobody wants me in this world. You don't know how that feels. Sometimes I'm glad you're here. And something else. I don't believe in science like our mama. It ain't science. It's superstition. What happened to my new lantern? It was on the wagon. It was there when we left for town. I'll look for it. Um, but first, Maddox, my mama's housekeeper, she quit. And I'm, I'm going to need to go to Wendling's so I can find someone to take care of her. Get one of those old hens that go to church with her up there to take care of her. Please, Maddox, this is my mama. I have to do what's right. Your place, sweetheart, is here at home with your husband. I broke it. What? You broke my new lantern. And when were you going to tell me this? It probably wasn't. <gasps> Nanox! I will not have her insolence. You didn't have to hit her. I did not hit her. 
I slapped her. There's a big difference, remember? Now, young lady, I want you to stand up. Go pack your things. You're going to Wendling. You need to take care of your grandmother. What about our schooling? Those days are over. Now get up and get ready. I will be waiting for you outside. Melinda turned that moment around in her mind. This new turn of events helped her to get to her grandma Mary's, where she hoped to learn more about her real daddy. Hmm. She's not doing well. Well, of course I'm not doing well. I'm a cocky old woman confined to her slug and nook. And on occasion, I hear my own death rattle. You call yourself a shovel tooth? Shh. Just get, get, get. Well, forgive me. What I meant to say was, sometimes you don't act too nice. Hmm. And I got no pills for that. Alice, we got to make sure she keeps taking her medicine, and uh, we'll just hope for the best. Well, if we're hoping for the best, I won't be calling you, yo buzzard. I swear, Mary, you've been calling me that for 45 years. Alice, let's go! No, oh, Mama. I gotta go. But I'm only a few hours away. And Melinda, she's a strong girl. Promise me. Promise me that you'll come back real soon. I promise, Mama. I will. She dies. She's not gonna die. Now here, I want you to take these. Come on, take them. There's been no birds or even white moths flying around inside of the house, so she's not gonna die. Now the doctor says she goes into these spells where it just takes her into the past, that's all. Are you coming in to say goodbye? Is she dead? For the first time, Melinda was on her own. She was a little scared, but it turned out she was not completely alone. She was about to meet a quirky new friend named William, who liked to call himself Shakespeare. Somebody here to help an old woman? I brought you something to eat, Grandma Mary. Well, thank you, Melinda. It's so sweet. But I could have come to the table. I thank like you. waiting on you. <laughs> thank you again. Oh. Grandma? Yeah? Yesterday, I saw a boy in your backyard. I think he was fixing to take your fruit. <laughs> you want me to chase him off? No. That's just Shakespeare. You don't mean no harm. His family's poor folk. He cleans my yard, and I let him take all the fruit he can carry. God grows them for free, so I share. Why do they call him Shakespeare? That boy, he took a liking to Shakespeare when he first learned to read. And now, he goes around quoting Shakespeare all the time and telling everybody he wrote it. <laughs> well, I think he's just a little bit confused. But he don't hurt nobody. Mm -mm. And the real Shakespeare, he ain't paying him no mind. Grandma, mm -hmm. what's that other language you talk in? You mean boot. Now, I used to know a lot more than I know now. But your Grandpa Bayless and all those farm workers, why, they used to talk boot all the time. I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> Say, listen, 
Did your mama, has she taught you to cook yet? Yes, ma'am. Some things. <laughs> <laughs> well, then how about for dinner, a big fat hen mm. with all the fixings? That sounds delicious. <laughs> okay. Well, then you better get out there in that yard and kill us a hen. Me? Yes, ma'am. You better get to it. Here, Chicky! Well, my words fly up like these chickens, but my thoughts remain below. Well, I can't say if they did or didn't, but you sound a bit touched in the head. Give me that chicken. I will neither a borrower nor a lender be. That's my chicken. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> if you want to eat at our house tonight, then you better give me that chicken. I declare I'll not have to eat again until morning. I say, does Mill Cook cannot lick his own fingers? Shakespeare, why do you talk like that? Well, I think conversation should be pleasant without scrutiny. And also witty without reputation. Grandma Mary? What was my grandpa like? Oh, ho, oh. Grandpa Bayless, he was a wonderful man. <laughs> Fetch me that photo album right back there on the shelf. That's it. <laughs> ah, okay. Now, we had lots and lots of cows. And when they wore bells, we called the bell Dingle Honk. <laughs> <laughs> Dingle, huh? Yeah, and I think we call the cows, I think we call them broadies. That's it. Because, you know, their horns were so broad. Yeah. Mm, that was the boots, broadies. <laughs> and then we had a lot of horses. Now, what do we call the horses? What cuff hold their tails are. That's it. Fuzzy tails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the dirty old pigs. Now, we call them borp. <laughs> Grandma Mary, mm -hmm. can you remember anything about my daddy? Uh, Is there any pictures of him in here? Well, what does your mother tell you about him? Nothing. Some say he's dead. Some say he's in the who's cow. Or the coyotes got him. I need to know. If he didn't want me, then I want to hate him. No, no. But. If he's dead, then I just want to stop looking for him and mourn him and hope maybe he was a good person. I don't know where to put my, my thoughts sometimes. I think you should ask your mother about him. I do not want to overstep my bounds. Hey, poker face, you gonna play those one-eyed jacks? Let me think. That's right. You're too chucky. Think fast. My fast thinking days are over, Maddox. That's more your department. You're right. I'm done. Jeb. How done do you want to be? You better think real hard about that. You still work for me, remember? I provide for you and your right wife. God is my provider. Oh, he is, huh? Does he pay your bills? Melinda wasn't one for putting up with nonsense. <laughs> Shakespeare was about to find out. You listen to me. No one would tell you, but I will. You did it right, Shakespeare. Look. I know a real language. I'll teach it to you, under one condition. Great, tell. That's it! If I teach it to you, 
then no more of this pray tell stuff. Very well. I'll tell you a story Grandma told me. And Eldon found some Forbes and Bucky's and felt high pockety. So she piked to Boone and used her Higgs for Borb. Are you with me, William? Sort of. It's just smushing words together and sometimes just making them up. Forbes. That's four bits all smushed up. Uh, high pockety. That means rich. The richest man in Booneville was also the tallest man in town, which made his pockets higher than anyone else. Get it? Here, here. Oops. I mean, I hear you. I have to go. I promised Grandma I'd take her for a short pike today. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Shakespeare. That had better be something you just made up. I didn't think so. I'll see you tomorrow. On Sundays in Boonville, there were those who came to church to hear about God's grace, while others were there just to be seen. That was a wonderful service. Thank you, Sophia. We are so glad to have you as our new pastor. Thank you very much. I hope we'll see you next week. Of course. Pastor Ray. Thank you. You know, hey, young man. <laughs> nice service, Pastor. How about you, Maddox? What about me, Mr. Preacher Man? Well, did you receive anything from today's sermon? I sure did. It's the old grace of God that saves us. And not our own good works here on Earth. Kind of gives us permission to do what we want to do. Wouldn't you say? Well, if my workers did that, I'd give them the boot like this little boy. Come here. Get out of here. Get on. I'm so embarrassed, Pastor. You're not responsible for your husband's beliefs, or lack of. Well, if I was just a better person, or if I would have kept myself proper, he might be a better person, too. That's not your job, Alice. That's the Lord's job. Think about what Paul said in Ephesians. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. I'll keep that in mind, Pastor. Good day. Thank you. Must be freezing. Come here. Come. Whoa, you get it here. Ooh. Come on, cover up, cover up, cover up. Now, there you go. Now. Ooh. Grandma, last night you had a nightmare. Mm -hmm. You were begging someone with high heels not to take something called a yink. You thought I was my mama. Grandma Mary. I just know it has something to do with my daddy. If I'm old enough to ask, and I old enough to know? You speak the truth, child. I guess all this boon talk has stirred up memories. <laughs> I can keep a secret, Grandma, <laughs> but I can't keep not knowing. How about we take our cold selves into the kitchen and make us some? All right, Grandma. <laughs> but if you feel your thoughts wandering, keep talking. Maybe you'll finish in Bootman. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Mama said that we were all bits and pieces of each other. Uh-huh. I want to be like your bits and pieces, Grandma. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Melinda. <laughs> Melinda, I want you to believe me when I say that your mama and your daddy, they were very much in love and they wanted you. They just put the cart before the horse. Your daddy, he was a poor boy, no family, so he became part of ours. I guess the idea of having a new baby in the house, it softened Bayless's heart. And he forgave Thomas. 
But oh, that didn't set well with Maddox. This Maddox had his hat set for your mama. Mm -hmm. There was a fight between Maddox and Thomas in the saloon. And your daddy, Thomas, he didn't have the money to pay for the damages for his share. So they sentenced him to several months in jail. But what happened to my grandpa and my daddy? My sweet Bayless. He got consumption. And he died that winter while your daddy was in jail. So sorry, Grandma. Mm -hmm. You know, the day that your daddy was released from jail, well, I watched you so that he and your mama could spend some time together because I was so hopeful of a new life for you and for them. Oh, Alice, let's get married today. I got a ring. That's my mama's ring. It's in the vault at the bank. <laughs> if you'll accept it. Thomas, I'd marry you if you only had a cigar band to put on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> That day, he was arrested again. This time for horse thievery? Oh, they said that there was so many witnesses. Oh, yes. Oh, well, it happened so fast. I feel so sorry for my mama. Your mother cried for days. It was a horrible turning point for her. She abandoned her faith completely, and she got deeper into more superstitions. And when she decided to marry Maddox, it didn't make any sense. She didn't love Maddox. But what happened to my daddy? We don't know. Your daddy gave your mother a necklace that he carved himself. And when he didn't come back, well, she threw it away. But. I fetched it out of the trash. And I think I know somebody who should have it. Somebody named Melinda. <laughs> but I got to remember where I put it. But I will. Yoo-hoo! Anyone home? It's just us church mice. Hello. Oh, you must be Melinda. Hi. Please come in. Uh, my grandma's taking a nap. Mm, oh, what a sweet girl you are. I expected you that expected we... You expected us, right? <laughs> we are the committee that checks in on our elderly once a week. They send us young ones. <laughs> we brought lots of goodies for you and Mary. <sighs> um... Either you take the baked goods, um, I'll do the canned goods. And Sister Martha, will you take care of cleaning the kitchen and take your time? Oh, <laughs> never a need to rush. Dear, do you have a step stool? Yes, ma'am. Poor little thing. Oh, uh, such a pity, born out of wedlock with a monster of a father who just run oh, off. Just a monster. Alice is very lucky that Maddox is such a saint uh, and took pity what with her being soiled goods. He's a saint, a real saint. Here's your step stool, ma'am. Oh, thank you very much, darling. I have a question. Sure, what is it? You ladies know the Bible and all the good parts and the bad parts, right? Oh, yes, dear. I don't think Thelma and I have missed a Sunday in 20 years. Oh, I gave birth on a Sunday once, but the good Lord understood. Oh, yes, it was Sunday. <laughs> so I'm sure between the three of us, we can answer your simple little question. Mm -hmm. Does it say anywhere in the Bible that we get to choose our parents? No, actually it doesn't. It then which sins am I supposed to ask forgiveness for? The ones I do now, or the ones that happened before I was born? I thought so. You must have missed that Sunday. William? 
God knows us before we're born and what we're going to do, then how can he be mad at us? God's mad at us? Well, not us. Not right now, anyway. I figure if church-going people don't have trouble with God creating the heaven and the earth, then why do they have trouble with forgiveness? You know what I mean? Oh. You beat me to the dinkongs, but I beat you to the house. I mean, region. <laughs> We're getting good at this spoon. Let's get some lemonade. I could go for a horn of lemonade. <laughs> the glasses are in the cupboard. You can get them down. I'll check and see if Grandma wants some. Okay. Grandma? Grandma? For getting kaji. What? She said it don't pay to get old. Now stop asking questions and go get your mama or the first person you see. Get help. Okay. Now! Uh, uh, uh. Fortunately, there were neighbors not far away that could help. James and his niece, Doris. I don't know how long I'm going to be there. I mean, that was a bad fall Mrs. Mary took. Really bad. Oh, I sent the message to her daughter like the doc asked. Okay. I reckon she'll be there just as soon as she can. Oh, John. You take care of Samuel, okay? I've cooked up some food and baked some cookies for you all. All right? Don't you worry. <laughs> We've been feeding ourselves for a very long time around here. And we already found the cookies. <laughs> Is she gonna be okay? Is she gonna wake up? Hey, that was a pretty bad fall. We'll have to just wait and see. I shouldn't have been outside playing. I should have been right here taking care of her. Grandma, please don't leave me. I'll be with her around the clock until her mama gets here. Thank you, Doris. I know. They told a boldly. Max knows the whole earth. Grandma, I don't know those words. Bogley and Earth. She says Maddox knows the whole Earth. That's everything. I knew it had something to do with my daddy. Melinda, I love your grandma just as much as you, but she's a bit chuckish. I can't believe everything she says. She ain't never lied to me, Shakespeare, in any language. What are you children talking about? Uh, we, we yeah, were trying to remember what the date is. I'm keeping a diary of my time with Grandma. Oh, that is so nice. Well, it's April 17th, 1906. Mrs. Doris, mm -hmm. would it be all right if we go for a walk? Yeah, sure. I'll ring the bell to call you when Mrs. Mary wakes up, okay? Suppose your mom's gonna take you home? I don't know, William. I really don't want to go. Not now or ever. It's funny. I was scared to come here, and now I don't want to leave. I hope your mama don't take you home. Why are you so You're trying to say you miss me? Well, who want I talk boom to? We can write each other. William? We'll always be friends, okay? You say that now. It's different when people move away. And I was really lonely before you got here. Are you gonna cry? Nah. 
a bug flew in my eye. Okay. <laughs> if you were about to cry, so was I. <laughs> Grandma. Grandma. Oh, Grandma. I shouldn't try to be such a billy coat. <laughs> I should have been watching you. Please, please get better. Oh, child, that's not practical. I have more friends in the Dusties than alive. And I so miss your Grandpa Bailey's. Never going to leave you. I want to stay here with you forever. <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye to William. I'll be right back. Melinda, hear me. Always listen to that still, small voice inside you. That's God talking to you. You go take all the time you need to be with your friends. Because Grandpa Bayless, he's right here with me. <laughs> love you. I love you, too. Stay close to the house. Can you come early tomorrow? Sure. some food for you. Grandma Mary? Dear Jesus. Grandma Mary. I'm gonna keep Grandma company. No, 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 no. She, uh, she's asleep right now, okay? Why don't you go read in your bed? I'll come get you when she wakes up. All right? Okay. your grandpa babies now. But I know she's at peace. What do I do without her? I don't want to go home. I just have to be strong. You have to be strong. Uncle James. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uncle James. Oh, my God. Thank God you're alive. Where's John and Samuel? Well, John's with the boy. They were shook up a bit, but they're all OK. Uh, I have Shakespeare in the back of the wagon. His parents are dead. Oh, my God. And he's bad hurt, and we need to get him to Boonville to Doc Woods. Oh, no, not Shakespeare, too. Our town was tore up pretty bad. We learned later the quake was centered in San Francisco. But right then, folks were desperately looking for friends and family members. Melinda! Mama! Oh. 
What do we got now? Oh. What? Oh, Lord. Let's get him inside, quick. The Marcello. Jane, help me now. Grandma said that Grandpa was here with her. <sighs> Ain't that something? It sounds like something your grandpa would do. Oh, Doris. Thank you so much for keeping Melinda safe. Oh, she was very brave. This is just such horrible bad luck for everyone. Uh, what's to become of Shakespeare now? He's my best friend, Mama. I was hoping he can come stay with us. I mean, he won't eat much or take a broom. I'll give him my bed. He can sleep on the floor, please. If it was up to me, I would, I would take him. But Maddox, you'd... Maddox. It's always Maddox. Melinda, listen, listen. Maybe one of the town's families will take him. That'd be wonderful. Um, we don't have much, but I can speak for my husband, John, and my uncle, James. He can come stay with us while he's still on the mend, okay? I mean, one more is still welcome. Thank you, Doris. The earthquake reminded everyone how fragile life is and how much we all need each other. What troubles you, Candelario? My soul is dark. For some, that meant looking back with regret. I'm kidnapped by my guilt. And I wish to be free. I must be sure before I speak my words. But to who? My words are not trusted in the white man's world. For James, thoughts of the past brought a heavy heart. What is troubling you, Uncle? I can't get Melinda out of my thoughts. I saw something years ago, and I should have said something. What did you see? It was Melinda's father. He said he stole a horse, and those are hanging words. I was just afraid that somehow they would blame me for something. And, and now that, that poor, sweet child's lost all those years with her daddy. And I'm blessed to be here with my family. It's just not right. But do you know where her father is? No. Uncle, you're a good man. I mean, you took us in and gave us a home. Maybe he's just got trying to talk to you. If this man is alive, he could be a prisoner somewhere. We come from prison. Slavery. Sold by our very own people of Nigeria. I mean, my parents died not even knowing freedom again. And I'm sure you know how that feels. And God wouldn't have set us free to be slaves to secrets and lies. And didn't you say in Matthew that with God all things are possible? Thank you. Sorry, Uncle. Clyde kept to himself after the quake and tried to drown his regrets. Jeb couldn't shake his guilt over the past either. Jeb, in my country we say, Dio quello che legge i nostri cuori. What's that mean? God is the one that reads our hearts. I want to talk to you about something. Pastor Rain made his rounds after the quake to ask if everyone was all right. Hello, Pastor. Hey, Marcello. How did you fare in the quake? Pastor, the other day after the earthquake, they brought this little boy to the doctors. He lost his parents in the earthquake. It's so sad. My thoughts go back to this little boy. I want to do something. Well, maybe he can. He's going to need some help. Let's pray about it. Thank you for helping my father today. 
The earthquake caused a lot of damage. Where else would I be? Family's important. This boy you talked about. Let's give him a home. You're different, Jeb. What's changed you? I've been reading. Virgil told me once this would give me peace. Sophia, what it says about me is true. I'm guilty, a sinner. Been and done some of those things I read about in this book. What things? Bad things. I did some bad things a long time ago. I don't have all the answers yet. I've asked God to forgive me and to help me. We find the answers. Together. Losing her grandmother was the saddest day of Melinda's life. She comforted herself by knowing she'd never have to bury her memories. When she returned home, nothing had changed except her. Zach, Grandma taught me this language called Bootman. I could teach you if you like. Sure. One thing. What's that? It's a secret language for just us kids. Don't tell the grown-ups. Never. Zach, while I learned Bootman, I also learned more about my daddy. Tell me. Hi, Melinda. You need something. My mama said you were adopting my friend Shakespeare. <laughs> yes. We're very excited. You'll be a good father. Jeb, you knew my grandma. Yes, I did. Her and your grandpa were wonderful people. She said you knew my daddy. Uh, I don't recall. His name was Thomas. I'm sorry, I don't remember him. Doesn't matter. I know I'll be a good father for Shakespeare. Thank you, Melinda. I'll do my best. Melinda. Yes? I promise I'll treat him good. Several weeks later, Shakespeare had healed well enough in body and spirit for James and Doris to deliver him to his new home. We are so happy you're here. I'm your grandpa. I think you look like a me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Wait, I have something for each of you. Picked them myself. I love them. You do this? I was mad and James taught me how to do some wet one. You did a great job. I'm gonna keep this with me. Now, let's get you in. Come on. <laughs> I'm so glad Willie will be close by. Can't wait to see him. Me too. You're gonna like him. I want quiet when I eat. Maddox, the children are just talking about their friend, William. Children are to be seen, not heard. I don't need my entire dinner ruined because of something that idiot Jeb is doing. But it's a happy time, Maddox. 
You should be happy for a job in Sophia. Don't tell me what I should or should not do. I don't want any talking from any of you. I wish they would adopt me. Clean up this mess. Melinda, where did you get that necklace? Sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. Melinda, you are not the reason for any of this. This is all my fault. Oh. Oh, this is my fault. Who could help me with a price ahead? Can you? You can. That you can. Can you? Mm. Well, well, well. Look at the big shot. Oh, that must be more. <laughs> If you didn't keep raising the price of hay, you wouldn't need to feel so bad. I don't feel bad, do I? I don't know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> to tell. William, they said you were alive. Move on. I got work to do. It's no place for foreigners and cripples. S sorry, I didn't mean Get out. Sophia. What's wrong? I really don't feel like talking. But Sophia, I'm your friend. I, what have I done? You. It's Maddox. How can you stay with him? I cannot be near him. Shakespeare cannot be near him. Sophia, please. Please, listen to me. I know what you say is true, but I don't know what to do. The other day I was sitting all alone and I wasn't afraid to die, and that scared me. I was afraid that I was gonna kill myself, and, and for a moment, I didn't care. Oh, Alice. I reminded myself that I would be leaving Melinda and Zach to the evils of Maddox. But I made it through. But I still feel so hollow and hopeless on the inside. I have no answers. I have no way out. But please, please do not give up on our friendship. I won't. Let me ride with you and we'll talk.
Some things only God can fix. Sophia, when God loved me. God still loves you. That's why they call it his amazing grace. That's what the pastor said, but... We can never be good enough. That's why Christ died. If we could work our way to heaven, we'd all be claiming, how do you say, bragging rights. You mean it's God's grace? <laughs> you mean I've already been forgiven? <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> that miraculous moment, Alice's life changed by the grace of God. She was finally free from guilt and ready once again to embrace life with confidence. Where do you come off yelling at my wife and son? Your wife is from Italy, foreigner. That little cripple of yours needs to get used to people telling him how it is. You bullied me for years. But you'll not scorn my family. Bully? What is that? You need to unload yourself out of here before you can't walk. Because that pretty little ite wife of yours doesn't need two cripples to take care of. You want your family? My wife and son will not be disrespected by you. Oh, oh yeah, well, that's mighty strong, Paul. Yeah. I'm gonna undo everything I can. Oh, you are, huh? Yeah, well, well, Jeb, I can't allow that. You can't do anything to me. You've got the perfect defense. You rushed in here and attacked me. I have to defend myself. Pretty good at framing and killing people. Aren't you, Maddox? Yes, I am, frankly. I should have killed Thomas, too. My mistake. Daddy might be alive. You're in deeper than I am. You and Virgil committed the crime. I didn't. Then he got a little religion to cover it up. Ensnared in the words of thy mouth to quote Pastor Virgil. All this because you wanted Alice. And for what? You're mean and cruel to her. To all of them. Do you think I care what that woman wants? I can have any woman in the valley, and I have. Alice rejected me, and she shamed me in front of the community. She chose Thomas for his child. I'm a saint for just taking her in. The worse it is for her, the better it is for me. You're despicable. Shut up. Self-defense, my friend. A simple case of self-defense. Mr. Harper. Come on, let's get him out of here and hide him. Uh. 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 Uh.
Jack, my ex is going to be looking for us. You're going to have to ride as fast as you can into town. I think Mama came for you. I'm going back to the orchard so he doesn't notice. Go. So sorry. Why did you lie to me? Jack, when you finished here, I needed you to go to town, fetch the sheriff. Jeb went crazy and tried to kill me. I had to shoot him. Jeb? Help me, Jesus, help me! Don't let Mr. Harper die. Please, please. <laughs> Mama, listen to me. Whatever you do, just agree with me. Maddox shot Mr. Harper. What? I told Maddox you came and got Zach, but Zach went to go get the sheriff. If you say different, he'll kill us both. You know he will, Mama. Please, trust me. None of my science has ever changed my luck or my life, Melinda. This time, I'm gonna trust God and you. Go on in and get Dr. Woods. Hurry. I'm sorry, Alice. I ruined your life. I got mixed feelings right now. So stay quiet, lest I kill you myself. And that's when I came to get you. All right, boy. You go hide, then you get home. Sheriff, what's going on? Jack here says that Jeb Harper went crazy and tried to kill Maddox. Did you see that happen, Jack? Nope, Maddox just told me. God help us. Send somebody to tell his wife this does not look good. Dr. Jem's life's in danger. Nobody can know he's here. I don't think he's going to live through the operation. But, but if he does, I, I, I'll try to keep him hid. He's, he's, he's a good man. And Jeb, you hang on. You've got lots to live for and more to explain. You people better leave now, but go out the back way. Don't let anybody see you. Mercy. What? What is this? My God. Lord, sure did your part. Please help me with mine. It's the sheriff. He's got the deputy and Jack with him, too. All right, now don't say anything. I'll talk. Okay, both of you, now get out of their sight. Evening, Ms. Lawson. Sheriff Rawls, Jack, deputy. Uh, Ms. Lawson, uh, this afternoon Jack came to me and uh, he told me that Jeb was trying to kill Maddox at his office. We went over there and checked and didn't find anything but a little blood. I was wondering if maybe you knew where Jeb or your husband are. I haven't seen Maddox since this afternoon. I see. All right, deputy, you go back to the office in case something comes up. Okay, Sheriff. Sure. Jack, you go straight home. You don't talk to anybody, especially not Maddox. I've got a couple more questions for Mrs. Lawson. Yep. There's something I need to tell you. Please. Where are the children? We're right here, Sheriff Rules. Oh. <laughs> it's a brave thing you did today. They're good children. Um, I think maybe what I have to tell you, they probably shouldn't hear. All right. Children, it's time to go to bed. 
Mama. It's okay. Go on. Ms. Lawson, I was a deputy the night Jeb and Virgil accused Thomas Briggs. What they had to say never really rang true to me. Jeb was the only witness, and as you know, Virgil was killed. I think Jeb may be dead. And I think, no, I know your husband is involved in all this. And I'm sorry to say, I think Thomas Briggs is dead. Is there anything you can tell me? You see the sheriff? You gave my message? Yep. What'd you do with Jeb? He wasn't there. What are you saying? I mean, I left Jeb in my office. There was blood, but he wasn't there. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Come on, come on, babe. Seen Jeb? Is Jeb here? You come here to pay his bill? He passed away this afternoon. Dead? Yep. Did he say anything before he died? Nope. Who else was here? Nobody. Doc, don't lie to me. When you came barging here like a birk, I was just filling out his death certificate. Now look, how you run your fields, that's your business, but this is my office and I don't want you in it. I've sold up too many Kimmies from the Fisters you started, and they never seem to stick to you, do they? Maybe it's that layer of money you're covered in. <laughs> layer of money. <laughs> Doc, that is funny. <laughs> I don't think I'd rest so comfortable on my money now, Maddox. You ever think maybe you're having money is your punishment? The good book says, to whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. Look what you've done with yours. Oh, yeah, that's right. The whole town solvent. You're absolutely right, Doc. I'm not afraid of you or your money, Maddox. And you ain't going to kill me. Oh, oh my heart. You all right, Doc? Huh? No. Give me that gun or you're a dead man. Give me that Take gun. It. It was my job to bring you into this world, but I'm old now, and it'll give me a great pleasure to set the world right by taking you out of it. Now. Yet. Out. So Thomas Briggs was convicted on the testimony of just two people. Nobody else testified. It was declared an open and shut case. Why didn't anybody look into this further? Mm. Oh, yes. Healthy, healthy. Not so bad, is it? done for yourself. You treat me like a piece of property. <laughs> Look at you. Finest clothes, finest home, everything you could ever want. I never loved you. You never loved me. That hurts me. Is that what you want? Hmm. Hurt me? And if that's true, then you can leave any time you want and take the little girl with you. But you're not taking my boy. Get out of here! I'm not gonna lie to you anymore. He's not your son. 
He's Thomas's. I don't believe you. You weren't pregnant when I married you. Yes. Yes, I was. Then what does that make you? Remember to lock your door, Maddox. Are you all right, Mrs. Lawson? What do you think you're doing? For one, I'm taking you in for not treating your wife like a gentleman. That's not a crime. And Jeb has gone missing, so I'm taking you in because there's blood in your office. And if I can prove it, for the death of Pastor Virgil Palmer. Alice, notify my uncle. No need. You'll see Judge Lawson down at the jail. Get him out of here. Let's go. Move it, Maddox. You okay, Mama? Is it you, Mama? I'm so sorry you had to hear it this way. That's true. All this time, I've been wishing I was adopted like William. I didn't want to be like him. You will never be like him. It took a while, but finally the circuit judge came to town and held a hearing in the saloon. Isn't that Alice? And that must be that child next to her. Don't judge the child. Or the mother. Well, I never. Yes, yes you, you did. did. Silence in the court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Mordecai Price presides. You can all sit down now. Bring in the accused. What do we have here, Sheriff? Maddox Lawson, suspicion of murder. Order! Judge, I've taken care of this whole community. I've put money uh, in. Uh, listen, uh, you, you're not to talk to me unless they say you can. Sit down. Continue, Sheriff. There's a man who was dealt some midnight justice, some vigilante justice, for a crime or crimes that we don't think ever happened. Order! I said order! What does this have to do with the accused? We intend to prove that Mr. Lawson, in collusion with his uncle, Judge Lawson, appointed themselves judge and jury to this man, Thomas Briggs. If that is true, a grave injustice has been done to this man. Where is he now? I wish I knew, Your Honor. This court is adjourned until I can review all of the records of this case. While I'm doing that, Mr. Lawson will remain in custody without bail. Court's adjourned! I wish I could fix all these problems. In this world, there's two kinds of people. Those that fix things, and those that break things. I'm sure that you're one that fixes things. I miss Jeb. I do too. Court is now open. I reviewed the records of this case, and uh, there aren't many, I must say. There is no proof that this man was given his day in court. The papers also show that there was collusion between Judge Lawson and Maddox Lawson. They were both in custody. What else you got, Sheriff? I have a witness, Your Honor. Bring him on, Sheriff. Daddy! Mama! What's going on? All right. We had to keep a bus safe, William. 
and do this. You told me he was dead. I didn't think you'd be opposed to a little shading the truth, Maddox. Jan on her, Bob. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth shall be gone? I do. What happened? I'm ashamed to say that Virgil Palmer and I took money from Maddox. Watch where you're going. To falsely accuse Thomas Briggs. We also beat him up pretty bad that night. Hey, I, I didn't steal nothing. Well, why would you do that, Mr. Harper? I needed money so I could ask Sophia to marry me. And Maddox wanted Thomas out of the way so he could have Alice. Your Honor, I've tried to live a good life since then. But this has ate up my soul. I'd rather go to jail than live with this lie anymore. Maddox shot me because I wasn't going to keep the secret any longer. Jeb, you charged into my office and attacked me. Now you're trying to blame something on me that I didn't do. Judge. One more outburst from you, and I'll have you removed to a cell where they'll have to pump air into you so you can breathe. Now shut up. Your Honor, both weapons used. <clears throat> just happened to belong to Mr. Lawson. So what does that prove? You are both despicable men. One of you knows it, and the other has died in a wool liar. Your Honor, I have another witness relevant to Mr. Harper's testimony. Bring him in. Sheriff. This is Thomas Briggs. Judge Lawson confessed that he had Mr. Briggs removed to a Mexican prison south of the California border. Now, may I continue with my witness, Your Honor? Go on. Mr. Harper, what else do you have that's relevant to this case? Your Honor, may I have my wife show her wedding ring to Mr. Briggs? Go ahead. It's my mother's wedding ring. Took it from the bank. The day I was arrested. It was meant for Alice. How could you? Evil upon evil. Lie upon lie. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sophia. Sophia. He stole the ring, and he's lying about it. He's lying about me right now. I think he does protest too much. Sure. Anything else? I think that's all, Your Honor. Very well, I, uh, I'm going to need time to ponder on these uh, testimonies and these events. Court's adjourned. This time, it only took Judge Price a little while to consider the case. But for Sophia, the damage had been done. Sophia, please, listen to me. Jeb loves you. I know what he did was wrong, but he risked his life to tell the truth and try to make things right. How can you stand up for Jeb? How could you stay with Maddox? They've ruined everyone's life. I've made my peace with it. I'm not innocent in all of this. Sophia, we all need forgiveness. But I can't go back to being a prisoner of hate any longer. I have something for you. Court is back in session. Come on in.
court is now open for business. Mr. Harper, uh, while I welcome your confession, uh, but there are so many stories attached to it. What we have here is Maddox's word against Jim's. I'm about to make a judgment here. I think it's going to make me very unpopular around here. Your Honor? Yes. I was outside helping Mr. Marcello unload the wine. I saw what happened in the alley. You took his horse and money. Oh! I even saw the glimmer of that ring there in the light. Jeb is telling the truth. I appreciate your testimony. Uh, all you saw was Jeb involved in the beating of Mr. Briggs. You saw no involvement by Mr. Maddox? Your Honor. Papa. It's all right, Sophia. Your Honor, I was delivering the wine of that night. I saw Maddox a pay of them. Did you get him? Yeah. I don't think of anything. Because I know Maddox is a richer man. He hire a lot of people. I know Jeb. He's a good man. He loves my daughter Sophia. And he's a son of Shakespeare. I believe he's a telling the truth. You saw this? And you let me marry him? I don't know what was the story, Sophia. The Jeb I knew later was a nicer younger man. All you saw was an exchange of money. Yes, Your Honor. Not enough. Not enough. Yes. Uh, you know, this, this is like a field of prairie dogs popping up. You and the latter, what have you got to say? Your Honor, I crossed paths with Maddox that night. Good evening to you. Get away from me. There's no manners at all. Must have been raised by buzzards. <laughs> I greeted him cordially, but he weren't friendly. And later on, I saw him talking with Jeb and Virgil real close. Now, I'm a little hard of hearing, but I got good eyesight on account of I always carry good light. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted at that, sir. I'm very happy for you. But uh, I, I do have to say to you that, as my sainted mother would say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I need facts. Judge, are you going to listen to every maniac that pipes up in here? Hold your tongue. Your Honor, may I speak? Well, go ahead. That night, I saw Mr. Lawson give money to those men. He say, and tell him some serious bogle about what this blue tail did. Don't mind old candle. That Beacon G don't know one word of English. He can't shine light on anything we're doing here. What about Thomas? That's taken care of. He say, I no speak English, so I no bother to them. And he right, uh, my English very bad back then. But at time, I speak very good booming. I heard every word he said that night and I saw his money. He paid these men for this evil deed. All right, now, in, in your own words, I want you to tell me what you saw that night. He say, now jape to the high healer and tell him Bogley, a serious Bogley about what this blue tail did. Now, look, I, I, I don't understand the, the thing you call bootling with what the hell. Uh, 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 tell me what happened in the king's English. He say, go to the sheriff and tell him a big lie. Then he paid him for the lie. He said not to tell anyone if they want to continue working for him. Oh. Is there anyone in this room who didn't see what happened that night? Your Honor, may we say something? Uh, children, one of you wasn't even born, and the other one was just born. Don't tell me you were eyewitnesses to this event. No, sir. But yes, sir. Zach and I were outside Maddox's office when we heard Maddox shot Mr. Harper. 
We also heard Maddox say he shot Pastor Palmer. We heard it, Your Honor. We pulled Jeff from the office to save his life. We did it. Us. And the Lord's help. Judge, everyone else has had their say. What about mine? Mr. Lawson, you and Judge Lawson saw to it that Mr. Briggs did not get his day in court. But I will see to it that you get your day in court. And Mr. Harper will provide a wonderful eyewitness account to that effect. You can step down. All right, uh, dang it, I, I'm about to make a ruling here. To you who stood up today, your fears transformed several lives in this community. But today, we are able to right a terrible wrong. Mr. Briggs, will you come forward? There's no doubt in my mind you have been maligned and falsely accused. And as a result, you have lost precious years of your life. There's nothing I can do to give you back those years, but I can promise to do everything in my power to see that you will have the years ahead of you. Sheriff, let this innocent man go free. <laughs> What's the journey? Linda, what a beautiful and brave daughter I have. Thomas, I... In the memory of that last night that we had together... It saved my life. It convicted my heart. That day for me was more than a memory, too. You have a son. Son. <laughs> Come here. We started off so wrong. But over these years I I found I found God's grace and forgiveness. And we have a second chance. Can you forgive me? Alice, will you still marry me? <laughs> yes. yes. Well, it's a bad time. Melinda's mama and daddy were married before the ink could dry on the divorce papers. And old Judge Mordecai Price didn't give Jeb any time in jail because he felt he was reformed. It took no time at all for Sophia to forgive Jeb, and that gave young Shakespeare a family again. 
Maddox and his uncle, retired Judge Lawson, were given that day in court as Judge Price had promised. They were both sent to San Quentin State Prison for life. Everybody stayed up all night after the locking, just harping about all the goings on and about how everybody makes mistakes. Melinda learned that her value was not determined by the decisions people had made before her. God loved her because he created her, and she was one of a kind. Yes, sir, God will override all sorts of situations that we get ourselves into. All we have to do is ask him for his help. God isn't who you think he is. He's bigger. And when you look for the truth, you'll find grace. <laughs>